welcome to my YouTube channel. So this morning I got up at half three because I'm trying to get um, a sunrise here at the Bucolet of Moor but in front of the Black Cottage. So if I turn the camera around, I'll show you the Black Cottage. So that's going to be the iconic shot taken from the corner here on the way. But there's also a Black Bothy down that road where I've never been before. So I'm going to try and see what shots I can get. So it's half five in the morning, the sunrise is due in another 30 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll take two or three shots pre-sunrise, or what we would call blue hour. Join me and let's see what images I can get right, this morning. So I'm going to grab some shots of the Black Rock Cottage. And if I turn it round, what you'll see is we've got the car. However, there's only one car, it's normally absolutely full. So this is a really good opportunity. So what I'll do is I'll take that out and Photoshop and I'll show you a quick way of doing it. I'll either use generator fill or other um, spot healing brush or whatever it might take. But I'll show you a quick um, tutorial on how I actually remove that car from the image. An object, you can grab the spot healing brush or the remove tool, just drag it over, highlight it and then the program, program will do itself. Or if I hit Control Z, to use generative fill, just draw around the car. For example, take a wee bit of time here. There we go, select generate, hit generate, and you get three choices. So you've got this choice, which has actually done a really good job. You've got the second choice, which flattens it out. And then you've got the third choice, which gives it a little bit more of a scattered look. I quite like the first one, so if I select the arrow, and then if I do Control e or Command e that flattens the image. And there we go, all I need to do now is just crop it, i keep my ratio, crop it in so we've got that rid of that rock, and there you have the final image. So hopefully that's been useful. But what we've got here, from an interesting point of view, is you've got the rock as foreground, you've got the cluster of trees, you've got the cottage, and then you've got the bucolet of more in the background. But the key thing here is getting depth. So, and making sure that that rock doesn't dominate the image, if, if possible. So what I'll try and do is I'll take a number of compositions, I'll take a shot where the rock's in the foreground, I'll take a shot where I'm closer to the rock, and I'll just use the top of the rock and skim over it, and then I've got the black rock cottage in the buckle. I'll make sure I've got trees in the composition, and I'm trying to do all of this in blue hour before the sun comes up, just so that I can show you the difference between what it looks like in blue hour. And then if the sun does come up and I do get some nice pinkiness in the clouds, it could be quite nice. So what I'll do is I'll take a series of images here and then I'll share those images with you now. So to get a different perspective, what I'm doing is I've brought the camera really low down and I'm using that big rock as foreground interest. But when you see the images, that rock might be too much foreground interest and it might dominate the image. So what I'll do is I'll move to the left hand side and then I'll shoot black rock with the smaller rocks in front of me. What I'll also do is I'll try and zoom past and just get a clipping of the rock in the composition and then that way I've got a bit of a you know the rocks there but it's not dominating the image but what the the image does it forces you through the image to the black rock and you've still got that beautiful buckle in the background the sky behind me is getting quite pink so we're starting to get quite a lot of changes so I'm just going to hurry up, I'll take some shots and I'll share these images with you now. I've been shooting low and now I'm shooting really high because what I'm trying to do is get, trying to find a composition where I can get the sky and 
I'm trying to get separation for that car to the cottage, at the end of the cottage, because I will take that car out in Photoshop. But I want the rocks, but because I'm higher up, the rocks aren't as dominant in my picture. Whereas when I was lower down, the rocks were in your face. So what I'll do is I'll show you a comparison of what I mean. So I'll share this image just now of the rock that's really low down. And now I'll share this image that I've just taken of a higher up elevation. And then you can let me know in the comments what image you think is the best image. Is the rock dominant or isn't it dominant? And am I getting a better view with a higher elevation or a view with a lower elevation? But what I'm doing is I'm just keeping taking shots here because I'm just trying to catch that really nice light that's coming up. It's now six o'clock, so the sun should be rising. There's a lot of cloud over the back there, but the, the sun will steadily start to come up and I should start to get some nice pinks and blues. But I'll keep taking shots here and then when I finish, I'll share these images with you now. So I've come down to a lower level here, just at the edge of the path in front of the cottage. There is somebody staying in there. So I'm not going to start talking loud. But what I'm just trying to do is expose for the sky again. But I'm also increasing the brightness for the foreground. And then I can potentially bring the two images together if I need it. But because I'm closer, I'm cropped in really tight to the cottage. And because I'm really tight into the cottage, what I've then got in my composition is these trees on the right hand side and then I've got the red door and then the red door's leading me in. The trees are pulling me in towards the image with the, book, the buckle in the, foot, in the background. But we've got that triangle of the buckle in the background and then we've got that V pointing in towards the cottage. So from a compositional point of view, that works. Well, I hope it works. It'll be interesting to see how the image turns out. But what I'll do is I'll take two or three more images here and then I'll share those images with you now. because, as you can see, the sun hasn't touched the buckle yet. But we can see the sun rising, because you can see the layers of sun around the mountains. And it's just starting to lick the bottom of the buckle. I'll turn the camera around, which isn't going to be that great. Um, so yeah, maybe another few minutes, and hopefully that uh, buckle will light up like a Christmas tree if we're lucky. The only thing is, I've got quite a lot of shadows for these posts that are reaching in. So I might have to do something with that in post-processing, but anyway, can't have everything. We'll make the best of what we've got and I'll keep waiting until that buckle's lit up. We're all going well, that sun's gonna light up pretty soon. And I'll catch back once we've taken these images. So now we have full sun. So if I turn the camera around, you can see how well lit up the buckle is and now the Black Rock Cottage. So I'm staying this side of the road because my shadow was being cast and my shadow was being cast across the grass earlier. So I'm going to go a wee bit further forward and I'm going to try and go low and take some low shots because the sun's directly behind me. You can see my shadow here. So what I'll try and do is look for different compositions and try and avoid my shadow being in it. If not, I'll need to figure out the best way to remove them. But I'll take a few more shots and I'll share these images with you.
right, so the sun's got really, really harsh. So I'm going to move away from Black Rock Cottage. And I'm just going to walk down this track road. So if you can see, you can see the ice in here. So what I'll do is I'll walk down because there's a black bothy down here. And it's a bothy that I've never actually visited before. So I'm going to go down and see if there's any kind of photographic or if it's kind of phot photogenic and see if there's any opportunities here for a wee image. Um, what I'll do is I'll keep walking and I'll catch back when I reach there. Found a wee bothy. There's a wee stream there. So I've just walked across the plank there. And what I'm looking for is a composition where I can get the Bothy, the Buchal, the snow-capped mountains, and maybe the stream as well. So I'm just going to walk further back here, it's pretty mucky, and uh, see if I can find a suitable place to stand where I can try and catch all three elements in the image. Right, let me find the best spot and I'll catch back. But I think it's a composition, however, the sun's playing havoc with my shadows. So as you can see, there's my shadow there. I've got the, the wee stream. I've got the wee bothy. Eh? I've got the buckle. But when I take my image, you can see no matter where I stand, I've still got my shadow over here. So I'm going to have to try and figure out how to take this shot because I want, I want this shot. Um, right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to look at moving over here a little bit and then taking a shot further down towards the buccal. I'm going to take this shot anyway because there might be something I can do with the shadow uh, maybe in post-processing but I'll wait and see. I'll go a little bit closer to the stream and see if I can get the composition there because the other bit I'm conscious of is just peeking over the heather there there's the white chimneys of the Black Rock Cottage and I don't really want them in the image so I'm trying to take the shot where I've got the least amount of post-processing that I need to do if possible and when I look up here the ski centre and the top of the mountain where the snow looks absolutely cracking it's really really pin sharp so I might turn around and take a couple of shots there so I've got a fair bit to do here to try and figure out how to get some decent shots without my shadows being in it just because the sun is directly behind me and it just so happens that the composition I like the sun's directly behind me, so. Right, I'm going to figure this out, and if any of these images work, I'll share them with you now. Well, I kind of persevered, and the only solution I had was, for one of my shots, was to hide behind that mound of heather so that my shadow blended in. Then that allowed me to shoot up the river so I've got a portrait shot and I've got a landscape shot. It's shooting up the kind of stream up towards the buccal and I've got a side shot of the wee bothy here. What I've also noticed is there's another trail, I think it's part of the West Highland Way, that walks up and there's an old stone bridge. So what I'll do is I'll probably take a wee wander up there I'm going to go low here and take a couple of shots of this bothy. I know there's a gas cylinder against it, but I'll, I'll take that out. That won't matter. Um, and any other distractions I can remove as well. But I'll play around here for a couple more minutes. And any more images I take with this composition with the wee stream and the bothy, because it's actually quite nice. Um, and then I'll share these images with you. And then I'll probably catch back with you when I manage to reach that stone bridge. All right, so I've come down this side of the stream because if I go that side, my shadow's just going to cast in front of the bridge. So I've got quite a nice wee kind of three-quarter angle on the bridge and I've made sure I've got the mountains and the Glencoe Ski Centre kind of chairlifts in the background, although, although they might be a distraction, but they could be too far away that you probably don't notice too much. Um, but I like the snow-capped mountains. So I'll kind of take a couple of different angles although I'm pretty limited with this one location to be fair um, yeah if I jump over the other side I might get a different composition 
looking that way without my shadow being cast on the bridge. And then what I'll do is I'll nip round the other side of the bridge and I'll take some shots for there because what I'd like to do is get the, br the bridge with a buckle in the background. So, oh, there's a wee bit of mist coming off the top of the buckle as well. Right, I'm going to take these images and I'll share these images with you now. Alright, so I've walked to the top of that path and to be fair, there's not a lot. When I look down towards the buckle, there's no clouds in the sky, so it's not going to be mega. However, earlier it should be it should have been interesting. If I look east, then we've got a lot of cloud formation and the forecast is to get rain in a few hours because I drove through a lot of rain until I got past Town Drum and reached Loch and Annalise. So what I'll do is I'll head back to the car and then I'll go and scout about a couple of other locations. And if I find anything interesting, I'll catch back with you soon. All right, so I've came to my next stop, which also could be my last stop. And as you can see, the three sisters are looking pretty 3D looking there with the shade and the shadows. So I'm just going down beside the river here. And what I'm going to do is try and get a shot of that little tree over there. I've done this image before, but in different conditions. So I'll try this just now. I'll get set up because I want to try and get the, the three sisters the way they are because some really nice shadows and it's given it quite a lot of depth. So I'm going to, I know how difficult this is to get set up. So I'll go and set up first and then I'll talk you through what I'm doing. I have to get down really, really low for this and I've splashed the rock. So the composition I've got here is what I'm trying to make sure as I've got the tree arching the three sisters there. I love these shadows that are popping up because that's given me depth in the three sisters and it's getting quite definition and the contrast between the dark shadows and the bright is really really nice. So from a compositional point of view I've got the arching tree I think one of the wee branches might be sticking over but I can fix that. I've tried to get as slow a shutter speed as I possibly can so I'm shooting at a quarter of a second and it's, uh, actually I'm going to have to change that. So I'm trying to get it up to a second, which is really, really challenging here because of the bright sun in the background. I've got an ND grad, I've got an ND9 on, I've got a polarizer on, and I'm still, still kind of struggling with getting that slowish, oh, I've got a nice smoothie water. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to make sure I cut down on all the highlights. I've got a really good histogram. Oh, right, that's a cracker. So what I was going to do, that those wee waterfalls behind me, they're not normally as full as that. So I was going to turn the camera around and see if I can get a shot of these falls, but do it in such a way where I've got these rocks in the foreground, just so that I've got a bit of interest. And uh, I'm just going to test to see if it's best doing this as a landscape or a portrait. I'm going to walk around the other side to see if I can get the base of the falls. I know I'm going to be shooting into the sun. But I'll go round for a nosy because I haven't been round that before and uh, I'll, I'll bring you with me and I'll catch back soon. Right, so I'm just walking over the bridge. I'll turn round, you can see when I'm walking, there's the famous Glencoe sign. So I'm just going round the barrier here and I'll end up over the back of those falls. I'll keep walking because this is... Uh, this could be quite tricky. So if anybody's coming here, it's really, really slippy. So just be careful. And on that note, I'm going to concentrate on my footing and uh, I'll catch back when I get to the location I see. 
All right, so I'm just standing on the edge here because what I'm going to do is I'm better to be above the falls to get a shot because shooting up the falls with the sun in front of me isn't going to work. It's just going to burn out all the water and the highlights in the shadows just going to be too extreme. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a panel and then I'll get the three sister mountains in as well as the waterfall. And then what I'll do is a two shot panel from a landscape point of view, which should come out as a quite a nice square crop, hopefully. I'll take a couple of other shots at landscape because this is pretty special from here. And when I look round, there's still a lot of severe highlights on that water. But I might do a zoom in shot on the falls because there's a lot of green algae and kind of green moss that could be really nicely saturated and show up quite well in the image. So I'll experiment, I'll try and take a shot of the falls, although I don't think it'll work. I'll share it with you and then you can see what I mean about the, the, the contrast between the darkness and the light, but the light's off the extreme. Anyway, I'll take these images and I'll share these images with you now. What an amazing location. I've been here before and I've never wandered down the other side. So it just goes to show, it proves to come back to locations and just wander and find new things. These falls are stunning. I ho really hope the images have turned out. So I think I'm going to finish the video here. So I hope you like it. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching, and here's to the next video.